Hello. I'm Dr. Tony Evans with The Urban Alternative. Everywhere I go now, people are raising questions and even expressing concerns about how all the events that we're seeing taking place around us now worldwide relates to biblical prophecy. There are a lot of voices out there that are interpreting uh, events and even giving timelines about how this relates to scriptures in the Bible. So I thought I would take a few moments to seek to give some biblical clarity to the chaos that we're seeing. The goal of biblical clarity is to give us calm in the midst of chaos, calm our fears in the midst of frustration, and give us confidence in the context of confusion and uncertainty. Prophecy is given in the Bible to validate the truthfulness of God, his ability to perfectly know the future can allow our, our minds and our hearts and our spirits and our souls to be at rest when things around us are restless. So I'd just like to take a moment or two to survey the prophetic calendar and try to put it in the context of what you are seeing taking place right now. In Matthew chapter 24, the disciples asked Jesus, what are the signs of your return? How do we measure a timeline having gone to heaven when you will come back? And Jesus gives them guidance. He gives them key principles. He makes it known that the specific time God is not telling us. But what God will give us are clues to look forward to so that we know how to live in light of his coming, even though we can't pinpoint the day or the hour that that event will specifically occur. But like when you go to a play and you hear the rumblings of things behind the curtain, uh, the curtain hadn't opened yet, but the rumbling indicates the show is about to start at any time. The biblical concept of any time is called uh, imminency. It means at any moment it could occur at any time. And I think it is clear there's a lot of rumbling behind the curtain. Jesus made it known that the signs of his coming would be wars and rumors of world wars. Well, we've always had wars. We've always had discussions about wars. but. Since Jesus' coming will affect the whole world, the bigger the rumors get and the broader the wars are, the greater the sound behind the curtains. We cannot definitively say that the wars we are dealing with right now are telling us Jesus is coming back in the near term. What we can say is either Jesus is coming back in the near term, given what we're seeing, or God is doing a divine reset and using the chaos to reset the operation of the globe. One of those two things are happening. So God is at work either way. What does the clock look like and how do things we are seeing now relate to it? Well, one of the things that's clear from Ezekiel 38 and 39 is that there would be this ruler called Gog who was over a land of Magog. And Magog, we're told in chapter 38 and in chapter 39, verse 2, is in the remotest part of the earth north of Israel. Well, there's only one nation in the remotest part north of Israel that goes up to the waterline to Antarctic, and that is Russia. The Bible makes it clear that there will be this 
invasion that will take place that will bring nations together in conflict with one another that will wind up in the Middle East and that will bring about the circumstances that will lead to the Lord's return. Well, I think it's clear that Russia is in play. The Bible talks about nations from the East, China, India, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia. And there is something that brings all these things together, including Europe and including the United States, oil. Everybody's talking about oil, right? Well, that is the one gem that is connecting everybody because it is the lifeline of existence in today's world. So it shouldn't shock us. In fact, even if Jesus is not coming back tomorrow, one thing ought to be clear. What we're going through now should be a direct indication of how things can be when Jesus comes back, because we're getting a good illustration of a world in conflict right now, so it won't be that hard. In fact, coming right off of COVID, we see how a famine, a, a plague, which Matthew 24 also talks about, can shut the whole world down, can stop the operations of the planet. God's word is true, and either he's getting ready to come back or he's giving us a down payment that, hey, hey, look at what I can do. So don't leave me out of this chaos because I'm right in the middle of it. What is the prophetic timeline? Well, it starts off with the rapture of the church. First Thessalonians chapter four. This is when Jesus comes back to take all who have placed faith in him to be with him. This is not him coming to earth, it's him coming to the air and we're getting caught up that is raptured. The dead in Christ will rise, get their glorified bodies. Those who've already died, it says, will come back with him, which means when you die, you're on in the grave, you are with him because you're coming back with him, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter four. And that we are changed, 1 Corinthians 15, in the twinkling of an eye to our glorified bodies. So that is the rapture. The reason we believe that the rapture takes place before this special time of tribulation is because it is a time of wrath and 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says that believers have not been appointed unto wrath. The worldwide conditions of chaos will set the stage for the rise of a personality. We see now how one personality can influence the whole world for bad. Well. This personality is called the Antichrist, 2 Thessalonians chapter two. And he will come seeking to bring peace to a chaotic world and he will be believed. The world will give him their undivided attention. And 1 Thessalonians five inaugurates this personality with the day of the Lord or the seven year tribulation period discussed in Daniel and in Matthew 24, this time of tribulation. This is the seven year of Jacob's trouble. When God is now through with the church age, because the church has been raptured, the Holy Spirit has been removed, called the restrainer in 2 Thessalonians chapter two. Having taken the church to heaven, now the day of the Lord. What does that mean? It means man no longer has the final decisions. People want to know, how can there be a God and there be so much chaos in the world? Because it's the day of man. And so God, to a certain degree, has a leash and he allows men to run to a certain extent on it. But in the day of the Lord, he's calling the shots. He's going to let Satan go wild. He's going to let Satan's incarnate being, the Antichrist, go wild, supported by false religion, the false prophet. This is all spoken of throughout the book of Revelation to bring havoc on the earth along with God's judgment on the earth because of men's rejection of God. This is the seven year period of tribulation. The last three and a half years being the great tribulation when really all hell breaks loose at the rejection of the one true God. Believers who have gone to be with the Lord up in heaven 
are going through the judgment seat of Christ during the seven year tribulation on earth in order to get our rewards. This attack, this coming together, Gog and Magog, bringing together Europe, bringing together the East, all coming against the Middle East, specifically the nation Israel, will lead toward the end of the tribulation to the battle of Armageddon. This is the battle when God, according to Ezekiel 38, will entice the nations to come together and even to turn on one another as they come to attack Israel because God is getting ready to lower the boom in judgment on God rejecting mankind. In the battle of Gog and Magog leading to the battle of Armageddon when God will judge the world in its rejection of him. That end of that battle of Armageddon comes about because of the second coming of Christ to earth. At the rapture, he comes in the cloud. At the end of the tribulation, he comes and sets his feet on planet earth to rule and to reign, having judged the armies with the sword of his mouth. All he has to do is talk and he will shut things down. And guess what? Those who belong to Christ come with him and we become his victory parade as he declares himself to be the new ruler of planet Earth. This leads into a 1,000 year party. That party is called the millennial reign of Christ. The 1,000 years repeated over and over again in the book of Revelation chapter 20. When the golden era of mankind will finally occur. That's the era that was predicted when God created Adam that men would rule. God just couldn't find a man worthy to rule, so he had to become a man so that a man could rule, but it would be a perfect man because it would be the incarnate God himself in the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. He will set up shop in Jerusalem, and based on our rewards, we will be ruling with him at different levels with different uh, occupational responsibilities as the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven, the capital city sitting over the physical city and Jesus Christ will rule the earth with an odd of Ryan, uh, a rod of iron because Satan will have been incarcerated and no rebellion against the rule of God through the person of Christ will be allowed. This is where the lion will lay down with the lamb. This is where the viper won't bite a child. This is where you'll still be an infant if you die at a hundred years of age. It will be the golden period of mankind when earth gets to be what earth was created to be because it's ruled by our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we who have believed in him rule with him. At the end of the millennial period, it says Satan will be released for a season so that all the held in rebellion, because it won't be allowed to go public, of men during that thousand year reign will be allowed to be freed up so God once and for all can deal with rebellion on planet Earth coming out of the golden age. And when this rebellion, this final rebellion is crushed, another Gog and Magog kind of moment, and is shut down by God is the white throne judgment. The white throne judgment, as opposed to the judgment seat of Christ, which judges Christians for reward, the white throne judges judges non-Christians for the degree of judgment that they will experience due to their rebellion and rejection. It is a evaluation of works. The judgment seat of Christ works for reward. The white throne judgment, level of judgment. Like Alcatraz and the, San, and the uh, San Francisco Bay, there was minimum security, medium security, and maximum security. So um, the Bible says, that this judgment will be placed in the lake of fire. Alcatraz is in the San Francisco Bay. So separation from God will be surrounded by fire, meaning no escape, but it will not be equal for everyone based on how you have related during the tribulation period and in your life as a God rejecter. And once that white throne judgment is over, 
The Son will hand the kingdom over to the Father and we will go into eternity. And when we go into eternity, when we go into eternity, a new heaven, a new earth, and we will be experiencing eternal bliss with God forever. I know this doesn't answer all the questions. It may only leave you with some, but keep trusting God. And if you haven't accepted Christ, do that right now because your eternal destiny is tied to whether you have received Jesus Christ as your personal substitute and receive from him the gift of eternal life. God bless you. Keep your eyes open. He may come tomorrow, but if he doesn't, you keep trusting him because he is coming tomorrow.